Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this Trade Station webinar. My name is Jesus Nava. I'm the Director of Client Training and Education for Trade Station Securities, and it's always a pleasure to be here with all of you. Uh, today, we have a guest speaker. His name is uh, Brandon Wendell. Some of you may already know him. Uh, some of you may have attended our prior webinar, which happened last week, and I just shared a link to that webinar here if you missed it. Um, it's a webinar on straddles and how you can take advantage of um, earnings season to trade those straddles. Today is all about the bull call spread, and I'm going to pass the microphone over to Brandon in just a moment, and he's going to do his introduction and talk to you through um, his way of trading the bull call spreads and uh, and some of the things that you have to do to make that strategy uh, you know, effective, and, and, and we're going to use some trade station tools to do that. Before we get started, the usual introductions, just to make sure that uh, we are aware that um, every symbol and idea that we talk about in this presentation is for educational purposes only. These are not recommendations of trade station. Also, that active trading is not suitable for everyone, and that past historical performance is no guarantee of future results. If anybody needs additional information on these disclosures, go to www tradestation.com forward slash important dash information, which is also the link that Manolo is sharing right there in the chat in case you want to jump to it. Um, another thing that I wanted to point out is that Brandon uh, Wendell is not affiliated with TradeStation, so his ideas and trading methodology is, are his own, um, and uh, we're just happy to have him. You know, Brandon Wendell is a trader himself, and he has some great insights to give us. So uh, rather than you know <laughs> spending some uh, time here talking about him, I'll let him do his own introduction. I appreciate everyone taking time out of your schedules and being here. And let me just pass the microphone over to uh, Brandon. Brandon, you there? I am. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome right. to everyone, and thank you for having me again. I appreciate being back. The floor uh, is yours. I'll go ahead and see if I can share. Oh, you got to cut your sharing off so I can share mine, if you wouldn't mind. There we go. And I'll share my screen. Perfect. Okay. So hopefully you guys can see my screen and hear my voice. And let me just get the chat up as well so I can see what you guys are trying to say to me. There we go. Perfect. And uh, <laughs> thanks. I'm a legend, huh? In my own mind sometimes. So I want to welcome everybody here. And yeah, it's kind of a crazy day because it is the Fed day. But, you know, there's a lot of volatility. So we're probably safer here than we are in the markets unless you have things already set up the right way for you. We can talk a little bit about how that works and what we're doing when volatility picks up like that. Uh, but as Jesus mentioned, we're going to talk about how to optimize profit potential with bull call spreads, which is an options opportunity. And uh, yeah. Basically, I am not a broker dealer or investment advisor. I'm not licensed. I am a charter market technician, which means I did a lot of education on technical analysis. So I understand that quite a bit. I've been trading for over 20 years and teaching trading as well for quite a long time. I've uh, been actively in the market since probably 1998, 1999. I actively in, uh, trade and mentor in futures, options, and Forex right now. So you'll notice I'm missing stocks from that list. I don't handle stocks too much. I like the leverage of the options rather than trading the individual stocks themselves. Uh, so I try to use those extra leveraged opportunities in those derivatives as well. So uh, we'll just jump right into it. And as I said, if you have any questions, just type them in. I'll be more than happy to ignore them completely. I mean, uh, more than happy to answer those questions for you as I can. <laughs> so today's objective is what the heck are we doing here? Well, we're going to go ahead and talk a bit about bull call spreads. I'm sorry. Yeah, bull call spreads. I think I had the wrong one up, don't I? That's weird. It says bull put spreads, but that's actually supposed to be bull call spreads on the slide there. I apologize. Um, interesting. Not sure how that got there. Yeah, we're doing bull call spreads. So let <laughs> me make a correction there. And yeah, so we're going to talk about a vertical call debit spread as a specific trading strategy. And it is a level three option strategy, I believe. Every uh, You have to take a look at the, the options uh, information when it comes to levels. And Jesus put, posted that link for you to help you with identifying what your level is, as well as upgrading your levels as need be. But basically, we're going to talk about how this is a strategic trading strategy. We'll talk about some of the advantages and, of course, the, the risks. We have to be aware 
of the risks involved in a strategy so that way we can handle the risk and be aware of what might happen if things go opposite of what we expected. You know, there's always surprises, right? We'll learn when to use this spread. You know, it's not always available to us as far as the way the markets are. We may not want to use it. So we'll keep an eye out for the specific strategies on times to employ the strategy. And more specifically, we can actually use certain tools like radar screen and scanner in TradeStation to identify better candidates. So I'll walk you through that and how to do that. And I'll also do a demonstration of Option Station Pro. I mean, understanding the straddle, or not straddle, excuse me, that was last week. <laughs> understanding the spread is one thing, but you also need to be able to deploy the spread. And Option Station Pro has some really neat tools that we'll go into as far as being able to place not just the order, but do what's called bracketing, where you have the stop and even the target uh, put in all together. So we'll talk a little bit about how to do that as well. All right. And basically, you know, the bull call spread is something that can be used with or in lieu of a couple other common strategies. A lot of people look at, hey, the market's going to go up. I don't really want to spend the money to buy the stock, so I'll go ahead and buy a call. And that gives them a little bit more leverage and some opportunities. And some other people who want to own the stock for several reasons, they may also decide to do what's called a covered call which is actually a level one strategy. I believe both of those are level one, very easy strategies to employ from time to time, again, depending on the conditions. But one of the neat things about bull call spreads is it is a debit spread, but it will give you a lower cost basis than those other two. You know, with the long call, the advantage is you have potentially unlimited profits. In reality, stocks don't go up forever. They just seem to go up forever when you happen to be short. <laughs> but in reality, they don't go up forever. They usually run up into resistance or supply. Trends change, markets change. So, you know, we do get a cap on the uh, amount of potential profit when we use the spread versus a long call. Lower risk. Well, since our cost is lower and when it comes to debit spreads or even debit strategies, the cost of the option is your maximum risk. So if the cost is lower, then you potentially have lower risk as well. The long call is a simpler strategy because it's only one leg, but you know the bull call spread is only two legs. So it's not as difficult as some other strategies might seem to be. And again, the trade-off is you can reduce your risk and your cost. What else we have there? We've got lower break-even prices, which is always a nice thing. You can start making profits faster if your break-even price is closer. And you might get a higher rate of return. Of course, again, this is debate. Uh, this is based on you getting a lower cost basis for the position versus the long call. So the amount of return you might get at the same movement of price of the underlying could be higher. Well, with the covered call, there's always a higher cost because you have to buy shares of the stock. So even with margin, you know, if you do it in cash, you have 100% in your cash account for the purchase of shares. For the covered call with margin, you still have to come up with two to one holding overnight. Plus, well, you reduce it a little bit with the sale of the option in the premium. There is higher downside risk. When you take a look, we've got the risk profiles here for all those risk, I'm sorry, those strategies. The, cover, the full call spread and the long call actually have a flat tail on the left-hand side that actually tells you this is limited risk. The covered call could go all the way down to zero. So obviously it has higher downside risk. So some of the things we have to worry about when it comes to the bull call spreads, you know, it seems great, but we do have risk involved, obviously. With any position in the markets, there's always risk. So the risk is limited though. You cannot lose any more than the premium for the position that you pay, okay? And the maximum loss is also... I'm sorry, I already said that. It's max, the maximum loss is limited to the premium paid. Sorry, I was kind of seeing some of the questions pop up here. I'm looking at different monitors. Um, that's in your preferences for orders. And that's something we can take a look at that as well. And I do know that if you're interested in more on the software itself, like TradeStation, there is the, um, what's it called? The Getting Started series. So you can go into tradestation.com and then learn and you'll see Masterclass and Getting Started. And Jesus does a really good job of explaining a lot of those different things as well. Okay. And let's see, is this a, the, similar to a vertical spread? It is a vertical spread. A vertical spread is basically when you are trading vertically on the options chain. I believe, let me see. 
Oh, I forgot to open it. So right here, let me open up Option Station Pro. And the reason why things are called vertical is you are using the same expiration date. However, when you trade more than one leg, you're moving vertically on the options chain to choose different strike prices. Now, there's two types of vertical spreads. One is called a debit, meaning you pay overall for the position. So you have a net cost to enter the position by paying premium. The other is called a credit spread where you receive premium, okay? And the debit spread is a limited risk position while the credit spread has typically higher risk. And we'll talk about those a little bit later down the line. We'll be back for some more workshops and whatnot. But for instance, taking a look at this Apple right now, and let's see if I can adjust. My font is a little small here, so I have to close and reopen Option Station Pro. So I'll do that in a moment. But basically what I was gonna say is right here, if we take a look at more strikes on Apple, a vertical spread would be buying an option and selling an option going up and down vertically on the strikes. That's all. So while I'm waiting and going back over, I'll close that out and reopen the app so we'll get bigger font to be able to see. For those of you who are ocularly challenged. <laughs> so again, the maximum loss for these debit spreads. So this is a vertical debit spread using calls or a bull call spread because it talks about the direction, it talks about what you're using, in this case, a call, and a spread implies there's more than one leg. So a spread is nothing more than buying an option and selling an option at the same time, or buying, a, buying an option and buying an option, or selling an option and selling an option. There's a lot of different things you can do, but as, as long as you're doing more than one option, typically, that is a spread. So we are dealing with bull call spreads, also known as debit vertical spreads. I'm sorry, debit call vertical spreads. Anyway, volatility, that's another thing we have to watch for. Volatility is going to affect the premium and the pricing of options probably more than anything else. We have many, multiple impacts on the price of options, and we go into what are called the Greeks in order to kind of uh, measure the risks. And volatility is measured, and the impact is measured by Vega on the option itself. And as I said before, that is probably one of the biggest impacts. For instance, again, we go back to Apple, and let me reduce the size of the chain. If we were looking at the February options here on Apple, and let me take it to just single, there we go, look a little better. You notice I have Vega, Theta, Delta being shown. These are some of the Greeks. Well, if you we were looking at the 185 call right here, you can see we've got volatility of 0.15. We actually have Theta of negative 0.15 and Delta of 0.56. So at face value, you would think that the delta or direction would have more of an impact on the premium, but in reality, the volatility or vega actually has more of an impact typically because the volatility can move much further and faster than the direction of the underlying security. So again, I'm getting a little more into some of the more advanced things, but we'll try to keep it simple. But just realize when we're dealing with volatility and these types of debit spreads, we typically want to open them with low volatility and have the volatility rise. Rising volatility helps this position. Falling volatility hurts this position when it comes to the bull call spreads, okay? Time decay, time is also a bit of an issue. You know, time decay hurts the position. Uh, I mentioned this last week and I'll mention it again. Options are very similar to ice cubes. They melt. And in the case of the melting, they melt in value. So what happens is if you take a small piece of ice, it will typically melt much faster than a large chunk of ice. So the bigger the chunk or more time we have before the option expires, the slower it will typically decay. And option decay or time decay is not linear. It doesn't go in a straight line. It's actually kind of curved and gets faster the closer you get to the expiration. As a matter of fact, 30 days or less to expiration, the volatility becomes very, I'm sorry, volatility. The time decay becomes very, very big and very aggressive. You can see that, again, by looking at different options. Should I look at, let's see, two days of expiration and the theta on the 185 call again, 87. That means for every day, you're losing 87 cents in time value, just melting away. 
Okay, and keep that in mind that these are not just 87 cents. Each option, call or put, represents 100 shares. So you have to multiply that by 100. That's $87 you're losing just because the next day came by. Going out to 16 days left till expiration, we see that the 185 only has 16 cents or 16 bucks of, all, of decay. Well, going a little further, let's go more than 30 days, 107 days, for instance. The 185 now only has $6 or six cents of decay for every day. Now, time is money. You probably heard of that saying before, right? Well, it's true when it comes to options. You are going to pay more for the options if you're buying more time. But you got to think of it as kind of a deposit. You get a lot of that back when you sell the options before the expiration. Okay, the bull call spread is a strategy that you enter and typically manually exit prior to the expiration, either for a profit or a loss. Okay, and typically, you know, you don't have to, but to avoid the very quick deterioration or time decay, you typically want to exit when there's at least 30 days left until expiration. Because as you see, once you go within 30 days till expiration, that time decay can become much more of an impact and you can lose a lot of the value of your options. So typically you want to avoid holding with 30 days or less till expiration. That means not only do you have to pick the right direction for these options, but you also need to make sure you purchase enough time, okay? Because you want prices to move far enough, fast enough, so that way you can exit the position with at least 30 days until those options expire. Okay, now if you're off by a little bit, it may not be critical, but it, you do want to get it timed as best as you possibly can. Well, there's also the missed opportunity factor. You know, I mentioned that we have limited risk and part of the trade-off for getting that limited risk and lower potential risk is that we also cap our profits. If prices keep moving, you stop participating in the profits once prices go beyond a certain point. And once they exceed the strike price that you've sold, you can no longer get any more profit out of that option or out of that spread. So that's not a big deal. Remember, we can go ahead and identify where prices are likely to go and buy and sell the proper options. We'll talk a little bit more about how to do that. Also, if you buy stock, you receive dividends. In trading the options, you are not going to be receiving the dividends. As a matter of fact, once the dividends are paid or the stock goes what's called ex-div, the options will jump in price because you will be trading them without the dividends being promised to whomever owns those stocks or whoever owns the options. Okay, so you don't collect the premium, I'm sorry, don't collect the dividends in the spread. So that's one of the drawbacks. If you want premiums, or not premiums, excuse me, dividends, I keep mixing those up. If you want dividends, then you gotta own the stock. But if you're looking to do a leveraged trade using less capital, then you do, can do the options and more specifically the bull call spread. So a bull call spread, as I said, is nothing different than, than a multi-leg debit spread. It's a vertical debit spread using calls, that's all. So you simply buy a call. So you're gonna to try to profit from the prices going up by buying a call. I mean, this buying the call drives the profit. You buy that call because as a trader, you are anticipating prices are likely to go up for the underlying security. And that should raise the value of the call that you purchased so you could sell it for a higher price. Another thing that will also help you is the volatility rising because, again, the increase in volatility should also increase the, the premium or the value of that option. So you might be able to sell it for more than what you bought it for. So typically, you're going to be looking at an at the money or out of the money strike when you buy that call. Okay. And, you know, a lot of people sometimes try to get away cheap. I always say you get what you pay for, especially with options. So again, if I go into, let's see, I just happen to be looking at Apple, it really doesn't matter which one we look at. I'll look at these April options. For instance, if we look at the money right now, we're trading at about $185 and 185 is $8.90. Again, that's for the per share times 100 be $890 to buy that option. Well, you might say, wait a minute, Brandon, what if I do this $4.20 at 195 is cheaper? Well, yes, it's cheaper for a reason. You won't be participating as much with the price movement. The delta that drives that value of the option higher 
at 185 is 58 cents, which means for every $1 Apple goes up, you make 58 cents on the option. But here, you're only making 36 cents. So you need a faster, bigger move to profit when you start buying those out of the money options. Some people do what's called a lottery ticket. And you know your odds of winning a lottery ticket or winning with a lottery ticket are very, very low. Same thing with these options. They buy a deep out of the money option because they're very cheap. You know, four cents, five cents, even 10 cents. The problem is just like with the lottery ticket, it's gonna be very difficult to win. You know, the odds are very, very low unless you have an explosive move. So we wanna be smart with this. And we typically wanna look at an at the money or slightly out of the money strike. You can even buy slightly in the money as well, okay? Uh, the implied volatility of long call isn't canceled by the short call, not necessarily, okay? We're gonna be dealing with different strike prices if they were the same, maybe. And the spread is best initiated when implied volatility is low. And implied volatility is, what if implied volatility is high and I'm selling it out of the money, wouldn't it cover my cost better for the buy of the at the money option? Well, remember you're, you're doing a debit spread, okay? Typically, whenever you're doing debit, you want volatility to be rising because that is something that's going to be helping you. If volatility is extremely high, yes, you are buying and selling an option, but overall still in that debit. So the emphasis and the risk is more on the long option than it is the short option. So you could still do this strategy of bull call spread while the volatility is somewhat high, but if it is too high, you're probably going to be putting yourself into more danger than you need to be. So we're just trying to do the better strategy at the better time. Typically, if volatility is extremely high, I would be looking for credit strategies rather than debit. That's all. It doesn't mean you can't do them. It just means we're looking for the best opportunities at the best time. And let's see what else we have here. Since, since extrinsic value is usually highest around current price, should you close out spread when the price goes outside the strikes or wait for more time decay? Uh, we uh, will talk a little bit more about closing out the spread, but typically if you can get your profit as soon as possible, you want to can, remember that we're putting in a deposit based on time as well when we buy these options. If we could sell them sooner because prices have moved in our favor, volatility's moved in our favor, we're better off. Because remember, we'll get more of our time value back, okay? So let's continue on with this. Remember, we're just buying an option right now at or near the money. Actually, it's probably even better if you can do this near some sort of a support level where you expect prices to bounce and move upwards. Obviously, the lower, the better, right? Well, we're also going to be selling a, a higher strike call on the same security. And you can select different strikes, absolutely. Two wide, three wide, we'll talk more about that as well. Okay, so the maximum profit is basically the difference between the two strikes minus any premium you pay. So you have to decide, okay, we're buying this option because it's pretty much where I believe prices will bounce from or it is at the money, slightly out of the money and I'm expecting prices to go up. Now we need to choose a strike to sell that brings in premium to lower our cost, but also still, still allows us to have Good profits. Because again, the difference between those two strikes minus what you pay for the option is all you're going to get for the premium or the, the profit, excuse me, not premium, the profit. So I said the profit is the difference between the strikes minus the premium. The maximum risk, if it all goes down, let's say the prices just collapse, you cannot lose any more than what you paid for the options total. The break even price. Basically, when do you start making money? Well, you start making money as soon as the price goes, underlying stock price goes above the strike of the option you bought plus the amount of premium you paid. So we'll take a look at this, by the way, in, in the Option Station Pro. It shows you everything there, okay? So some of the risks that we have. Well, as I mentioned, time decay is one of the risks. If the time goes by and your options decay in value, that's one of your risks, holding on too long. We also have the risk of the underlying stock dropping. Remember, this is a bullish strategy. We expect prices to be going up. If they go down, we could potentially lose. And because we are selling an option, there is early assignment risk. What that means is you are selling a call, right? You are obligating yourself to basically sell stock to someone. 
Well, that's why you're also buying a call. It kind of covers you to a certain extent, but there is early assignment on the short call as part of the risk. So when do we actually want to use a bull call spread? I actually did one of these not too long ago, and we're going to go live into the markets and take a look at some hypothetical opportunities as well. But basically, we want to use this when we expect prices to go up. It's a bull call spread, right? So we want moderate bullishness. And we say moderate because we're expecting prices to go up, but only to a certain level. If we expect prices to be skyrocketing, you would want to do an opportunity, perhaps just a long call that just can profit from however far prices go. With the bull call spread, we want moderate bullishness. We expect prices to rise, perhaps from a support level up to a resistance level, because we have capped amount of potential profit with that capped amount of risk. We also want to lower our cost. Once again, if we bought the stock, we have to pay for the stock. Or if we buy a call, we have to pay the entire premium for the call. But with a bull call spread, we are able to lower the cost by using the short call to pay for some of the long call. And of course, we're limiting risk. The cost of the, the premium that we pay is all that we could possibly lose. So this is what the risk profile for a bull call spread looks like. You'll notice maximum profit is capped and maximum loss or risk is also capped. When well, we're choosing the strikes overall, the long strike should be at or near support level. So we expect prices to bounce from that area. The short strike could be at or above a resistance level because we expect prices to go near and maybe touch that strike, but not really go too much further than it. Remember, that's where our reward is limited. Do we have to worry about getting assigned? Yes and no, it is a concern. However, if you are selecting a strike that you're selling, that is where prices are barely going to get to, the likelihood of getting assigned might be lower. There's always a risk. You could get that early assignment, the alternative is to trade what are called European style options. Typically options on indexes are European style. That means there is no early exercise, no early assignment. The only way that somebody could exercise their options is at the expiration itself. So that's one way of avoiding that and removing that risk. Uh, SPY is not European style, that's American style, but SPX options are, the index options, okay? but not the, the ETF and stock options are typically American style, which means you could exercise whenever. So slightly higher risk, but also slightly higher premium. Remember, you're getting paid for your risk as well. So for instance, I chose Abbott. It was one that showed up on my, my radar screen quite a while ago. And what was happening, we, the stock was in a bullish move. I noticed an area of support or demand really, and an area of resistance around 115. The support or demand was around 106. I think that's where it was, just above, yeah, 105, 106 area. So it's kind of hard to see on that chart. So going out to the options. Now, this picture was done a little bit later. As you can see, there were only three days left till the January 19th options to expire. However, the entry for this was back, actually I have a spreadsheet. There it is. Because I went into my, my trade manager window and saw all the information for those two different spreads that I put on. It was 1226 for the entry. And that, oops, that is incorrect. It's a 108 rather than the 180, excuse me. So I did the 108, 114 bull call spread and also 109 to 116 bull call spread. The first option was the one that was purchased, the lower strike. The higher strike was the one that was sold. Okay, so it was entered on the 26th of December, exited on the 16th of January. So not the best example, because remember, we typically want to exit when there's more than 30 days left till expiration, but this was just a hypothetical and done in a simulated mode. Okay, so when the price of the underlying stock goes above both strikes, it seems that it cannot be cashed out at full profit. There may be. Right, and because of what's going on with the pricing of the options, you might have to time it better because if it, it spikes up above the strike that you sold, you may actually lose a little bit of value there as well when you exit the position, of course, okay? 
So it seems like you have to wait until expiration to get full value. Not really, not necessarily. You don't need to go to full. Well, you could go till expiration to get the full value because again, if they do expire above, then there's no extrinsic value. It's all intrinsic value. And you would get 100% of the difference between the two strikes minus the premium. So yes, you could do that, Robert. Uh, let's see. So at 4 p.m. on the close of European style is when they're allowed to exercise. Correct. They cannot exercise until the options officially have been settled and expired on European style. So again, looking at this, I was looking at the ABT and 108, buying the 108 at $6. Well, it was a different price at the time. Selling the 114 and you see 69. And also buying the 109, selling the 116. There were two different spreads put on with those two different, sorry, four different options. And again, just looking at the spreadsheet, you could see these were the individual trades right from the trade manager. The purchase of the 108 was at $2.69 per share. The sell short was 37 cents collected to offset the risk and drop the entire cost to $2.32 per share or $232 for the option spread. You can see that it was exited at a price of 501. The profit was $2.69 or $269 divided by the premium to buy. It was actually a pretty good return, 116% in less than a month, right? Entering on the 26th of December, exiting on the 16th. And then pretty similar here. The 109, 116 was done the same day, just at different prices. The exit made the exact same profit, but because the cost was slightly lower, it was 142% rate of return. Yeah, I just basically copied the trade manager windows. So I went into my workspace. I think it's hidden in the back, but just opened up the trade manager, looked at my active trades, copied the window and post pasted it into Excel. It's pretty simple. TradeStation has a lot of neat tools that'll let you do those kinds of things. So example of using the bull call spread. And then again, we're going to go out and take a look at the markets and see how we could find these opportunities. The nice thing is, yeah, Jesus is actually posting right now the workspace that we have here that was created for bull call spreads is available to you as a TradeStation customer or client. You can download by clicking on the link. There's even instructions on the information that's there as well. The scanner that we created, and you don't necessarily have to use that. There's many different things that you can do to find bullish securities. And then we're going to go into the radar screen to scan real time for opportunities. So we'll talk a little bit about that. But placing the trade, pretty simple. Going back, and I'll walk you through it as well. We find the trade based on our scan. Then from that security, we put it into the Optionization Pro, select the strikes by clicking on the ask price for the one we want to buy and the bid price for the one we want to sell. And it'll show up as an order ticket, as a vertical spread. We're going long, 108, short, 114. And basically right here, we can choose what price we want for the limit. It automatically selects what's called the mid price. It's a nice price. The problem is you're less likely to get filled on that, okay? Based on the bid and ask of the individual legs. So the natural price is much, easier to get filled, you notice that you're paying a little bit more though for that natural price, 528 versus 516. The nice thing about TradeStation is there's plenty of information for you. There's no guessing. You know, when I'm in Option Station Pro, I know exactly what my max profit would be, my max loss potentially for the trade. Again, this was not done on the actual day I entered. I just want to make sure you realize that. So choose the mid price, as I mentioned, or you can change it, max profit, max loss, all spelled out for you right there. And you can place your order. You can also analyze the order on the following page. You can set it up to be basically a, ver a visual aspect here. So we can see how much we potentially gain, how much we potentially lose. We could even move what are called the price slices to see what is the break even price? Where do we need this to move before we start even profiting? Yeah, select, actually, let's walk through one. Why not, right? So if I go in, first of all, I have my scanner here. So I ran the scan not too long ago. And what you'll see is if I go into the scan, and this is explained in the PDF as well. So as Jesus put in the link there, it's available for you. You can build this scan pretty simply. 
step by step. And what I'm using is we want volume to be at least a million shares. So it's a liquid security. The price I put above $15 to avoid penny stocks. And we wanted bullish stocks. So the price over the last four weeks has gone up at least 20%. I use RSI as a momentum indicator as well. So I mentioned that before, you can choose different indicators, different scans that you like, whatever you like to find bullish opportunities. And I said before, Jesus has done a great job in the masterclass of identifying different tools that are in TradeStation and teach you how to, find, how to use those. Is there a way to filter for only European style? Good question. I don't know. I, uh, that's something that Jesus would be more aware of than me, but... If I go into options related data, I don't see it so far. And I don't believe there's a way to do that. Just optionable, that's all. However, you could probably look. Uh, there's usually, like I said before, there's lists available from the brokers as to what's American style or European style. And you can also, for the most part, stocks, ETFs are American style. Indexes, options on indexes are usually European but there are always going to be exceptions. So just verify. Anyway, so if I run this scan, like I said, I'm looking for stocks that are somewhat bullish. Also, I did on the weekly to make sure they were pretty bullish as well. I could add this last one, but it does filter a lot out. I'm looking for prices that are pulling back after it's been very bullish. So let's see if anything shows up there. May or may not. So it's scanning, and I did the entire stock universe there. It's 11,104 stocks it was scanning through. And let's see, unfortunately, it takes a little bit of time when there's that many securities. I probably could narrow that down, obviously. Almost done. And once we have that, we could actually export the list into radar screen. I'm just going to stick with what's up in my radar screen at this moment because nothing showed up there. But as I said, if I drop that last piece, you can see that I did actually find how many securities. I'll zoom in real quick to this. Ooh, 52 on my last search. So these were stocks that are above $15. They're liquid and they're bullish right now. Oh, yes, absolutely, Rich. You could probably go to CME to find those or CBOE as well. CBOE. And you can adjust. Yeah, you can definitely adjust these if you don't like it. You just go to settings window. And right there, font, I'm at 14 right now. If you want to make it bigger, make it bigger. By all means, it's easy. So also right here, I went to the radar screen. This will help us with real time. You know, this is my overall scan, but it'll be static until I run the scan again. So in the radar screen, I can actually do real time scans to see options well i want to see that open interest on the options perhaps is very liquid right now showing five thousand maybe i go a little bit higher ten thousand just to make sure we have a lot of liquidity okay and the list is still pretty good this time i just did the s p 500 i also have average volume of over 1 million again i want to make sure it's a liquid security and i did rsi is greater than 40. the reason why i did that is typically in a bullish trend the RSI doesn't dip below 40. So I want to make sure it's relatively bullish. And of course, I can add more to this as well. But if we copy the list from here, which actually shouldn't be too hard to do, if I click on it, oops, sorry, it's linked. You probably just hold the, I know there's an easier way to do that, but I just copied that list and I'll put it after the S&P 500, I believe. Oops, come on. Yeah, the link is there with the instructions on how to put it in your workspace. So here, let's see. Oh, I need to put it below the 500, don't I? Yeah, that's fine. I'll mess, I'll mess this up for right now. It doesn't matter. I'll just put the list at the top. All I'm doing is taking the list from that workspace and paste. And there they are at the top, the ones that I found that are bullish. And again, it's now filtering good liquidity for this, the options as well as the volume. And now I can go through these. Oh, we got AMD just in the news, right? So AMD on a daily chart, 
looks pretty bullish. Also, on the weekly chart, looks bullish just below. Well, let me go a little bit deeper into that. And I should probably help myself out. Where did I leave my notepad? Apologies. There we go. Well, right now on the daily chart, we're not really near a good buying area yet. So I might have to wait for the entry on this, but that's fine. We can actually set up the trade ahead of time and utilize some of the neat tools we have here in TradeStation for this. So if I am looking for an area to buy potentially, yep, this one is not adjusted right now. So I typically edit some of the tools that I have here. And I use the Fibonacci's, believe it or not, as my demand and supply drawing tools. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this real quick. A little bit more weight. And let's see, labels. There we go. I'll set that as default for now. Oh, one more thing. Label, right justify, there we go. So we looks like we have an area of demand right here at about 150, okay? Now, there's no guarantee, obviously, that prices will bounce from 150, but that's what I'm looking at right now, okay? Yeah, I can use the up and down arrows as well for expanding and, and uh, lowering. I'm sorry, I forgot about that too, some of the shortcuts. And actually, I'm gonna use that. Why is that arrow pointer? Oh, well. Figure it out later for my cursor. I don't like the crosshairs necessarily right now. So where is this price likely to go? Well, that's another thing we need to figure out, obviously. This one doesn't necessarily have an overhead supply that we're going to or resistance because we have all-time highs. We could also use things like Fibonacci extensions. Uh, why do I say that AMD looks bullish? Isn't it bearish because of lower low and lower highs? Well, right now on this daily chart in front of me, I'm seeing higher lows, higher highs. You know, there's a low that has not yet been made yet, you know, as we pulled back with the earnings that came in. So as of right now, this is still bullish. It is pulling back, as I said. And let me zoom back out again a little. Anyway, like I said, this is just a hypothetical. I'm not trying to set up an actual trade. I'm just giving you some ideas of things you could possibly do with this. So if I decide, where's that Fib extension? There we go. Let's say we go, oh, come on. Most recent low here. Why didn't it go? One more time. Low. Oh, that's right. I think you have to hold it. I'm so used to different platforms. And I messed it up. So we'll try one more time. Otherwise, I can just make up a level. It's fine. There we are. So from low to high and the pullback that we've already experienced, now I can project, and let's just say hypothetically, we think it's going to go to 190. So our support level or bouncing point is around 150, and we're expecting this to go up to say 190. Okay, so if that's the case, now I can go back over to my Option Station Pro, bring in AMD. And I can do a little bit more work on this to figure out how long it might take to get there. Remember, I don't want to buy options that are 30 days or less till expiration. Because if I do, that time decay is going to hurt me and go against me. One of the other things I could also do, which I didn't right now, is go in and take a look at how the volatility is on the security versus the historic patterns in the volatility as well. So going here, I'm just going to look at the April 79 days. That's plenty of time. Again, we don't want to get in necessarily right now. We might want to wait until this stock pulls back to 150. The reason why right now, if the stock is at, uh, where are we, 170, we're going to be paying a lot of money for the 150 call. But if we wait to enter until prices have come down to 150, those premiums will also drop. For instance, right now, 170 current price, the option, the call option is only 1470 but the 150s are $13 more at 27.30. Okay, so let's say we wanna buy. I'm gonna click 
on the 150 ask price. And did it load? Nope, let's try that again. There we go. I clicked, and actually, I think I had that set up for analyze, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Let me do this again. Put click to trade first. Just for an example, it doesn't matter which one it goes to, but I, I had it set up, as I said, for analyze. And I wanted to do it as a trade. So we'll do that. 150 to get in. Click on the ask price. And notice it loaded right here. Buy. And mine set up for five for quantity. Somebody was asking about that earlier as well. You can change that quantity by simply going into your settings. So under your settings, I think it's, is it right there? No, which one is it? Oh, it's not on this X settings, I don't think. I realize it's on the uh, settings on the preferences on TradeStation itself. So if I go back to the TradeStation window, file, preferences, order entry. And now when I go to my options, order entry under trading, right here, you can see, I think I have a set. Yeah, five contracts. So if I want it to automatically go to one contract, I just change that, that's all. But that's something somebody was asking about earlier. Okay. Uh, the risk involved with the strategy. Yeah, don't worry, I'm gonna get there. Uh, sorry, I was just reading some of the questions. Why does the option say spread single instead of vertical? Because what I'm doing is I'm building it one by one. If you decide you want to build it all together, you can go to vertical, but I'm doing this one by one so I can select the strikes that I want individually. It just makes it a little bit easier. So what I did is I simply clicked on one option. I had the set click to trade. And again, it put it as five, but now it'll do one. So there, that's my one option to buy the 150 call. Well, I want to add and make this into a spread. Remember, we don't believe that this is going to go above 190. So now I go to the 190 strike and I'm going to be using the bid price. But at the same time, I'm going to hold down control on my keyboard. And notice the first one that I went long, it put in blue. When I held the control key on my keyboard and selected the bid price, it made it red. And now look at this, it shows vertical spread. Buying one, selling one, buying the 150, selling the 190. Great. Okay. Well, wait a minute. I don't want to get into this yet. Okay. The reason why I don't want to get into this is because right now the price is way too high. So one of the neat things I can do with TradeStation is, okay, I'm going to enter this trade and let's say, well, the cost right now is about 1980. But again, remember, we're looking at the long at 150 is much higher than it should be when prices get down there. So I can do some estimations and figure out what the price would be based on it going coming down to 1980. And actually we could do that by analyzing it. It's one way of doing it. So let's say we analyze, and this is based on now, February 26th, and if prices were to go to a slice, we just move this down to 150. And you can see that it's showing a value right now, if the price is at 150, around $9.60, roughly. Now, it may not be exact. So we have to kind of decide how much we want to pay for it. Or if we just know we want to get in and we're not worried about it paying a, maybe a, a dollar or so one direction or the other, what we could also do is just do a market order rather than doing a limit order. So I go back to my trade window here and we'll do market, so we'll get in, but again, we don't wanna get in yet. So I go to activation rule, click here, that's called the ellipse button, okay? So I click on that ellipse button, it brings up my menu, and now I can go to price, and we are looking at AMD, add, it says activate order based on AMD going down to or equal to, $150. How cool is that? So now I am going to put in this order to buy the 150, 190 bull call spread, but not until prices get down to my demand zone. That's pretty neat. Is there a way to place a market activation after hours? Well, 
it won't enter the order until regular trading hours. You're talking about, can you place this overall after hours? I'm not sure. You should be able to. You might have to wait. Uh, hopefully, you could do it after hours because, and you can also, I'm not going to go into all this right now, but I can do what's called single trade tick, double trade tick, just to make sure it's actually there. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in, in the future. But now I've set this up, hit OK. And this, if I place the order, should not be active right now. It is going to go in at whatever price the market happens to be if prices drop to $150 on AMD. That's pretty cool. Actually, you know what? I will place it. Why not? There we go. Now the order has been placed. I can go over to manage. And well, I've opened positions, but it, as far as orders, there's the received is not filled. Vertical AMD spread. And I can manage the order there. That's pretty cool. I can do that. Again, I don't have to get in right away. I can wait until prices are right. Suppose we look at a different security. That prices are near where we want to be in right now. That way we could potentially enter a security. Let's see, we got Hilton Worldwide. Well, waiting for that to pull. It is pulling back, but not quite to where we need to get in. Honeywell. Let's look at the big picture here. But that's not what I wanted. No, not yet. And, you know, you may not be able to get an opportunity always right away. Might have to wait a little bit. And that's the nice thing about having the activation rule on TradeStation. I can set up the orders for the future when prices are right. Hmm. Not the mo that's the most bullish opportunity, but we are much closer to where we'd want to get in. This is ON. So I'm just going to use that as an example. Again, this is not the best opportunity, just using an example. So once again, if I expect prices to bounce from an area that we're near, right around 7036, and we're expecting it to go up, but only to a certain point, let's say 85. Okay. So we're expecting a bounce from about, we'll say 71 to 85. And once more, I'm not really going into depth on this, but we have what's called a positive divergence. So prices might, might bounce. Again, might. I go into Option Station Pro. And before I go any further, let me delete this out of the analysis. So we're starting fresh. O N. Bring up the chain. Yeah, I should probably check the volatility as well. And there's things I can do to see how the volatility is. I actually spoke about that in last week's webinar on the straddles for earnings. And I actually happen to have some of the volatility indicators there. So if I do click and look at ON, which is what we're looking at, Right now, the volatility is a little high. So no, this may not be the best opportunity currently. But again, I'm not really worried about that. I'm just trying to show you examples of how you could do it. You need to go out and find the right opportunities at the right time. This is just an overview, okay? So we're looking at a, a rally from about 71 to 85 potentially. So I click on the, whoop, let's go to the right options first of all. And well, actually that might've been, we've got 79 days left until the April options. So once more, I'll bring those up. What's going on here? There it goes. And well, I don't have 71, but I do have 70. So I'll click on 70 to buy. You can see it says buy when I hover my cursor there. And then we expect it only to rise to about 85. So I'll hold down control and click 85. And it loaded up one to one. Bear with me for a moment. A lot of construction going on in the neighborhood, apparently. <laughs> so there's my vertical spread. My maximum profit is nine hundred fifty-eight dollars. My maximum loss is five hundred forty-two dollars. Okay, and that would happen if the prices were to drop below the strike seventy dollars, and the options expired. That's how I could lose one hundred percent. That's the risk right there. As a matter of fact, let's go over to analyze. Actually, first of all, let me go ahead and place natural. I'm just going to place this trade. 
I'm in simulated mode. So again, this is not a trade that I've done enough analysis on, I'm not making any recommendations. I'm just doing an example. That's all. So I'm going to place the order. I'm going to hit the analyze button as well, but then go back. Actually, I can do it there anyway. I go to my analysis page, it's loaded, and just click on trade. Natural. Place order. Yes. Order filled. And the order has been filled. Now, taking a look, I've got what's called the risk profile up here. We can see that based on the current prices, that's the yellow line. I can see where my reward, or sorry, my break even price would be. And the break even price is going to be pretty much whatever I paid for the option, which it looks like it was $5.53. So the max loss is $553. Well, $5.53 plus the strike that I bought, I see that my break even. Now it is a little bit different because again, time value and volatility, a few other things, but it's right around here, about 7311. As a matter of fact, I can also change the plot. Oh, it's not showing now, sorry. That is graph. Let's go to now. There we go. And we can see that there's the break even price. Let's see, mess with this a little bit more. That's theoretical value. Right there, about zero. So my break even is right around 72.37 right now. Now, at expiration, my break even is going to be way up here. It's basically the strike price plus the premium paid. So as soon as we go above that, I start making profit. And as you can see, I can only make 947. Remember, that's the difference between the two strikes, which is 85 and 70, minus the premium I paid of about five and a half dollars. So that's all I can make. It's a little under 10 bucks. And I make that money if the prices run to the upper level here. Now, if I exit early, obviously I can possibly make less, but I might get a lot of that time value left. So I would only lose if price goes below the 70. Well, at expiration, if prices are below 70, I would lose, yes. However, I could still lose if prices at expiration are below my break-even price. The break-even price at expiration is 70 plus the $5.53 that I paid. So actually, if the prices at expiration are below 75.53, I lose. I lose anywhere from a penny to the maximum loss, which is five, $553. I would only lose the maximum if prices are below the strike of $70 at expiration. Yes. But yeah, if prices at expiration are below that break even price, you lose. And you can see it changes how much you lose based on how much time's left. And remember, watch, watch this. If volatility rises, let's say volatility rises by 10%. Remember we showed, or I did show right here, about 72.37 is about break even. It's not exact. Let's see. Ah, it keeps jumping as prices. That's okay. There it is, close to zero for the theoretical value. But watch what happens if volatility actually goes up by, let's say, 10%. That's actually making a profit now, even if prices don't move. If volatility jumps by 20%, even more of a profit. So volatility rising as well as prices rising also allows you to get a profit from a bull call spread. So that's kind of placing the trade. Now, we also want to manage the trade. You know, those were the ones I talked about earlier on ABT. If you're in a position, you've got some choices. You can place your stop losses. You can bracket the order for your target as well. Relatively easy. You know, this one ended up going straight up, and that's why I ended, exited the position just before at 113.92, just before 114. So if you want to place a stop loss or you want to place a target order, or you simply want to exit the position, once you have an open position, you click on the ellipse button next to the position, and right there, you can do close this position, or roll, or analyze close, whatever you want. If I click on close this position, notice what it did. I was long the 108, short the 114. It now says sell the 108, buy the 114. It does the opposite. 
So again, if I go back to my open position that we just took, there is it. There it is, O-N. I went long the 70 call, April 19th, 70 call, went short the April 19th, 85 call. If I want to exit that position, should be able to click, close this position. Actually, hang on. It's showing single options, both on the same security. I need to drag it. Now it's showing as a vertical. Make sure it shows as a vertical. If I didn't do that, that would actually only exit one side. So be careful there. If these are showing separate, you have to put them together as a vertical. So now you notice the ellipse, there's only one, not on individual legs. You can separate them again if you choose to. But let's say we want to close this position. Okay, so we can close this position, as I said, once prices reach our target. Let's say once it gets up to our resistance, about 85 bucks. How do we do that? Well, this is going to sell the one we went long and buy the one we were uh, went short. And once again, I can either try to put in a price where I expect it to be based on analysis or simply a market order and say, look, if ON, the stock, is greater than or equal to $85, and again, we can get verification that's been there a couple of times, so maybe double trade tick within the, the national best bidder offer. That's just a verification to make sure the trades have actually occurred there multiple times. I click OK. Now, this will exit my position at whatever the current market price is when the underlying security reaches my resistance level. I can place that order. And it was under debit. I think it's, oh, did I not do it as a, yeah, I did as a market order. And let me make sure I did that right. Sell to close, buy to close, estimated closing price. That shouldn't be right. I might have done something wrong there. I'll have to take a look at that. But basically, that's what you would normally do. You could do it as a market order, or you could also do perhaps a stop order if the price goes against you. Remember, we put in an order for, what was it, $5.53 is what we paid for the option. What if... Why is there a credit next to the limit price pull down? I'm not sure. Why is a credit? It should be a debit, to be honest with you. Oh, no. Yeah, it should be a... No, it should be a credit. We're going to go ahead and sell one and buy the other for a credit. We're closing out. Anyway, let me take this back off. And again, we, let me try this again. We'll start off fresh. There we go. So now I'm not... Nothing with the order. I'm going again to the manage. Once again, we have the vertical spread. And sorry, what does vertical mean? Vertical means, no, it's one spread. It just means that we have multiple legs. That's all. It's a vertical spread. Mm -hmm. Vertical being same security, same expiration. So right here, again, I click on the ellipse button. We're going to go to close this position. Okay. Now, what if I know how much I'm going to gain based on the move? For instance, oh, wait, no, I don't even need the calculator. Forget that. I was going to say, the maximum profit for that position was based on, where are you here? Get rid of, there we go, trade tab. Maximum profit is $955. What if I only want to risk one third of that potential profit? I can set up a stop order that gets me out if the premium drops to where I'll lose more than one third. Actually, I do need the calculator for that. Just real quick, basically, we potentially could profit $955 if this closes and expires above 85 bucks. However, I don't want to lose more than $318. Well, right now we paid, what, 500 and 553 to get in. That means if the premium drops to $235 or $2.35, we want to get out because then we would lose $318 or one third of what our potential profit was. Well, let's do that. If I go into my trade, again, I've already clicked on the, at the uh, close the position. So I'm selling the lower strike and buying the upper to close. You see, it says close. And what I could do is put in a stop saying if the price gets to, what did I say it was? Two, 
35. Yeah, not 236, 235. There we go. Intelligent, and actually this should be GTC for my stop. But basically, if the premium goes down to 235, remember I paid the price of 553 to get in. So if I close this by selling it for 235, that means I would lose that 300 plus dollars, one third of my potential gain. So if I, play, I place that order, there we go, and go to my, whoops, wrong one, manage. Now I have my position in, you can see my underlying position is still there, and I have pending orders for the stop to get out, which is pretty cool as well. So I can put in the, tar, uh, the order for the target as well to get out if prices get to that upper price, or if the premium drops to a certain level, I can get out for a potential loss, or let me cancel that order once again. One last thing. I think this is it right here. Sell to close, yes. Cancel order. There we go. And once more, I go back to my order that I'm in on right now, ON, close this position. Same thing, I'm going to get out with a market order and I'll just do GTC, but I'm going to get out either at a profit if the price of ON goes up to my target, which is 85, or watch this, or if the price drops below, what's my level I was buying or looking for it to bounce? What if it goes down and breaks that level? I'm on the wrong page here. We'll call spread. 68.26. If that level doesn't hold and we break down, I can simply get out. So this says activate that order based on prices either hitting my target or hitting or breaking the zone and losing. Now, I don't know exactly how much I'd make or lose, but again, I can calculate that based on the uh, risk profile by putting in the different prices. So if I click OK, now this will exit if prices either go up and hit my target or if they go down and break that level so I get out. How neat is that? Do we need a full max premium if we exit early? Well, you have to pay the full premium to get in, but you will get a lot of that back if you exit before the, op the expiration of those options, depending on where you get out. So again, we can go into the analysis and we said, okay, if it drops below 68, can't remember the exact number, but you can see what the theoretical profit or loss would be and how much the value of the option would be based on how much time passes and also if the prices break your zone. Also, if it goes up, now if it goes up too quickly, you won't make as much as you can see. This is still today, but let's say it goes up in a week or so, we can adjust the graph. Let's say it gets there by February 14th, Valentine's Day. If it were to hit our target by Valentine's Day, February 14th, let's see, that's showing 85. There it is. If it hits $85, theoretically, without any other changes, we change the volatility back to zero for the change. There we go. We could potentially profit $457 out of the 900 maximum. Still a profit. It's about 80% profit. So we could actually figure out approximately what this, what the results would be if we hit our target or if we hit our stop loss. But the nice thing is, in order to do that, put in that bracket, all I had to do was put in the activation rule with a market order to exit the position. So unfortunately, I've kind of run out of time. If you have any questions, let me know. Again, the links will be up for the options. Uh, we have what's called the Trade Station Options Education Center here. And you'll see that going into the Options Education Center, you've got right here, Straddle Opportunities for Earnings. This one that we did today, the bull call spreads, even upgrading your options levels. You can go into those. If I click on those pages, it'll take you to where you can download the workspace and play around with that, as well as the instructions on using the workspaces. The webinars will also be available there as well. So again, if I go back, 
to the Options Education Center and the Straddle one that we did last week. If you missed it, the workshop, you can go ahead and right there, watch the webinar. So that's where it'll be posted as well. So let's see, what kind of slippage do you get on the options? It depends on how li liquid the options are. You know, it's gonna be varying from option to option, different securities as well. Uh, let's see, given on how high the bid ask spread, yeah. There's definitely different prices. Is there a practical way to save money on the bid ask spread and option trading? Depending on, yeah, you can try to, you know, you saw the orders. You could try to go for mid prices. That's the wrong thought. You could try to go for mid or, uh, I guess we had like natural prices. I'll just click on one of these to get an order ticket. You got the mid natural. You could try to shave in between those with your limit prices to get better pricing. But the further away you get from natural, the lower the probability is of getting filled. So once more, you also need to take a look at how liquid the options are. When we take a look, for instance, at the ones I chose here, I could change the columns. So if I go into my columns, instead of all the Greeks that I have here, we were to look at something like volume and open interest. Where is it here? I'm missing it. Intrinsic. Oh, I have it already. Never mind. That's why I'm not seeing it. It was there. So anyway, with the open interest columns, if we have decent open interest, then we shouldn't have too much of a problem getting filled. But if the open interest and or the volume is relatively low, then yeah, it's going to be much more difficult to get your orders filled. Okay. So yeah, that's one of the reasons why we were doing this, the filter in the radar screen. I was looking for open interest of over 10,000. Now, it's not individual strikes. It's a bunch of them on the near the money monthly that's measuring. But I want to make sure that there's enough open interest so we can get in and out. Things like AMD, there's 2 million of open interest. You know, if you start getting lower, Hol uh, Hologic, 10,000, you might have a little bit more slippage because it's not as liquid. But it still may be liquid enough. Okay. So I want to thank everybody for being here again. Um, how does the market maker determine the natural price? The natural price is, again, it's all defined in TradeStation as well. If you were to go into TradeStation and click on definitions for these under the help, the little question mark, you'll actually get how they find all those things, which is pretty cool on the platform. But basically, you know, we're dealing with two options, two bids and asks. So if you were to type in, I think it actually is natural. It should show you but it would be the ask price for the one you're buying and the bid price for the one you're selling. That would be the natural price. So again, they have glossary, order panel. They talk a little bit more about that. But yeah, it's pretty neat. On TradeStation, you can get help on any little piece. If you have a definition you want, just click and ask. <laughs> so thank you very much for being here again. And as I said, this will be available within the next couple of days as far as the webinar uh, to review as much as you want. And if you have more questions, if you could give us some feedback, we'd also really appreciate that. You should be seeing a poll popping up that asks you a little bit more about this workshop. And we really appreciate the feedback. That way we can continue to bring you new stuff in the future. Uh, TradeStation is really working hard to give you a lot of education and make sure you feel comfortable with a lot of the different tools that are available for you. So uh, thank you, Jesus, for having me. I appreciate it. Again, I'll turn it back over to you. No, thank you so much, Brandon. I mean, that was great information. I'm sure that everyone got something from this webinar. Always look at the TradeStation YouTube channel. We post all our webinars and recordings there. So that's a great place to look for any of our content. For any questions that I didn't get to, please email us at education at tradestation.com. All the links, you know, uh, that are available for the PDFs, for the workspaces. If you didn't get those, please email us and we'll make sure that you get those, okay? Thank you, everyone, for taking time and being here and, and learning a little bit about TradeStation, a little bit about options. Uh, please check out our events calendar for upcoming events. We look forward to seeing you there, okay? Have a wonderful afternoon, everyone. Great to having you.